Hey guys, Cam McClellan, welcome to today's Wealth Squad. I would have to say that I am probably described as a humble Australian property investor. So I'm your standard, standard Aussie investor. I follow overseas economy, follow local economy and see how the taxation world, the government policy affects my investments. I get tired of these superheroes, let's call them Captain America, come over here sprouting. There he is, Captain America. Coming over sprouting about. G'day guys, I'm Captain America. This hero economist from America who, because they've got a larger population, come over here and think they've got an understanding of our financial world and think that obviously the American way of life should get applied to Australia. Now probably Captain America. I should also say, <laughs> Elle's daughter had a four-year-old birth at superhero party yesterday, so we thought we've got to take advantage of this Captain America suit. It's really me, Al Lewison. Alright Captain America, when you come over here sprouting, Mr Captain America, hero economist, when you come over here sprouting about the Australian economy, our house prices, what's some of the garbage you dribble? Housing bubble. You've got a housing bubble in your country because of different factors. So the main factors that you always sprout off about Captain America is um, the difference between our price, property prices and our rental yields. Would you say that's correct? Yep, it's a bubble. That's a bubble. We've got a bubble. That comes down to obviously we provide a taxation called negative gearing to assist with affordable housing. Oh, that's ridiculous! Negative gearing. You guys don't do that. We don't do that. That's that's ridiculous. So you have different ways. That's to causing a bubble. It's causing a bubble. So we don't we get a tax concession on negative gearing, but we pay tax call, a tax called capital gain when we sell a property. Do you pay capital gain? No. We, what's capital gain? Because if I sell it, I don't pay tax. I can buy a new asset. Oh, so as long as it's bigger. So we're paying, we're getting a tax concession through negative gearing, but we pay capital gain, whereas you don't get negative gearing, but you, yeah, is that right? Well, so yours encourages you to hold the property and provide affordable housing. Yeah, that's Mine right. Mine encourages me to sell it and upsize my building. Yeah, so okay. hang, hang on, in America, you guys do, af you do affordable housing, what's it called? Rent control. It's very effective. It means that the government <laughs> controls how much rent I can charge tenants in my building. It's rent control. So there's specific suburbs and buildings that um, are deemed rent control, is that correct? Over there? Yes. And, and that works well for you guys, does it? Seems to work really well. Seems to work well. Rent control. No bubble. So rent control. <laughs> rent control. Let's have a think about that. So rent control. So you have uh, affordable rentals in specific buildings which force in a lower demographic of people, I think we've got a term for them over there, you may use this term, we call your rent control buildings ghettos. Ghetto? Yes. Like the song? In the ghetto. So, so in Australia over here, because we didn't want to have these ghettos, these scumbag areas, let's call it, so what we do is we provide negative gearing, which provides investors a tax saving, so we spread out, instead of focusing that affordable tax benefit in one area, providing a ghetto, we spread it evenly across Australia through investors, so we have rental, affordable rentals throughout Australia. So you're suggesting that in Australia, negative gearing enables everyday Joe Blows like you, Cameron. Joe Blow. Not superheroes. To provide housing for less fortunate people. Well, that's correct. That's correct, because investors really are the superheroes of Australia, providing affordable housing to everyone. No, but there's a bubble. But our politicians are pretty short-sighted over here, Captain America. They're pretty stupid, everyone must admit. So they're talking about removal of negative gearing. Removal of negative gearing? Removal of negative gearing over here. So let's quickly talk through... So who will provide housing for the people who can't afford their own housing then? Well, Cameron? well it won't be, investors, man. won't be investors like me until the point... So if negative gearing came uh, was lost, what would happen, Captain America, is I would stop buying investment properties for a period of about 12 months. 12 months until all my tenancies finished up and I jack my rentals through the roof because no investors are coming into the market. I would jack my rental prices hugely sky high because there'd be not enough investment properties on the market to support everyone, and to which point it became affordable for me to have housing again and buy investment properties and I jump back into the market. But there's something wow. else that's going to happen at that point in time. Something similar that happened to you guys. What's that? While all the investors stop buying investment properties and the building industry collapses, which is the biggest driver of our economy, our economy will go down the gurgler. So the, so the politicians that bring that one in is going to be uh, quite a... Now that happened to you guys, didn't it? The building industry collapsed? Uh, it did, yeah. The whole whole thing sort of... Implied. I think that was called the GFC, wasn't it? GFC. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, that was a good one. But how many people own investment properties in your country every day, man? 
uh, every day, man. Was there about 2.3 million, I think? No, it's about 10, about 10 percent. They're about just under 10 percent of the population Ooh. on investment properties. Who, who votes for the government in your country, every day, man? Well, everyone over here has to vote. So that 2 million people who would be pissed off would be not voting very favourably for the government so that which, brought that in. So which government party would bring in that if they're going to lose that many voters? We don't have a Republican Party over here, Captain A. Um, mm. The losers that may bring that in called Labor. Right. But, 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 but think, surely they're not going to risk losing all the votes. I think all parties are basically as silly as each other. They think over a short term, don't they, Captain A? Very short term. Short-sightedness bubble. There you go. So a couple of uh, examples of why the American economists um, can't seem to understand the driving factors behind our economy compared to theirs. We've got another lever called interest rates that we can gear our economy backwards and forwards. They haven't got that luxury. Um, RBA controls that over there. They've got no interest control. Um, anything else you got to cap add, Captain America? No. Ah, I think you just impressive. I think you're just enjoying wearing that suit pretty much. <laughs> A little bit too much. Okay.